Hi, my name is Dr. Claudia Sonder and I'm with the Napa Community Animal Response Team. And today we're going to go over some tips for you to have a red flag day routine. And part of that red flag day routine is going to be to have all of your supplies together for your animals in the case that you have to evacuate. Those of you who live in Napa County are really familiar with the term red flag day. But what it means is a red flag day is a day where there is high critical fire danger. It usually is a combination of high wind, low humidity, and high fuel levels. Um, but it can be a combination of those or other factors such as the potential for lightning strikes. When a red flag day is declared, it means that there is a high likelihood of fire occurring and spreading rapidly. And on those days, we recommend that you have a red flag routine for you and your family uh, to be prepared. In the last five years in Napa County, all of our major fires have occurred on red flag days. So it's a good idea to use that day as a day to make sure that you have everything in place for your family and your pets so that if the worst happens, you can get out and get out safely with your animals and with your family. So the first thing to think about is to have a pet information sheet made. And this is a sheet that has a picture of you with your animal and it has on it your contact information, the name of your veterinarian and their phone number, uh, what your dog eats um, or if they're on any medication, and also any behavioral things that people should note about your dog. And so if you have this prepared and laminated in your home, then on a red flag day, you can pull this out and you can put this on your counter where you keep your dog food. And this will be a map for someone to follow if you're not home so they know exactly what to do, who to call, and what your pet looks like and what your pet eats. It's a good idea to have a small baggie prepared with a few days worth of your dog or cat's food as well as any medications that they need on a daily basis. And then once a month on a Sunday, pull that out and exchange the food and the medication so that these remain current throughout the fire season. It's important that you have a crate or a carrier that you can get your pet into, whether that be a cat or a dog. Ideally, you have a luggage tag or something that has all of your contact information on that crate. The crate's in good condition with nothing broken on it, and this can be filled out and ready to go on a red flag day. A really good idea during the month, um, summer months, is to put something delicious in that crate every Sunday. Open the door, can of a uh, little bit of tuna fish for your cat or something that your dog really enjoys, and then or their ball. And then um, that way they become very accustomed to getting into their crate and um, it's not scary when that crate comes out. It's actually a treat. So very smart idea to condition your animals to come into the crate and to be comfortable in their crate. Last but not least, you want to make sure that you have enough water for your pets and you want to keep that water um, in your go bag and you can trade this out once a month too. But remember that often these red flag days are hot days. These animals are going to need fresh water. Um, so it's a good idea, as Smokey says, to be prepared. It's very helpful for you to have a collapsible water bowl with you or in your kit. Those are small, um, they're easy to find, and that way you have a way to offer water to your pet, um, whether they're in the car or at a safe uh, evacuated site. A really important thing to consider and plan for is to have friend or family member across town who's outside of the fire zone that's willing to take you and your family in in a, in a evacuation. And so Part of planning for a red flag day and drilling on a red flag day is to make that phone call to that person who you've made those plans with and, um, and go ahead and pack your animals up and drive across town to that site. And that's good practice. It's, it's good practice in communication. It's good for the animals to get in, go for a ride, and have a positive experience. So really, in summary, your red flag day routine is to have all of your paperwork together, meds, food, and water together, crate ready to go, animal caught up somewhere where you can get to them easily, and a phone call out to a friend or family member who's outside of the fire zone that is willing to take you in if you need to go ahead and evacuate. 
So to review, your evacuation kit for your companion animal should include an airline crate that is the appropriate size for your pet. On it should be attached a luggage tag with all of your current contact information. You're going to want to have your pet identification sheet completed with a current picture of you and your pet and all of the information including pertinent contact information for you and family, your veterinarian's phone number, any medication that the animal's on, how much and what brand of food it eats, and any noted behavioral abnormalities. If your animal is um, microchipped, then that's an important thing to have on here too. And when I talk about a behavioral abnormality, what I'm talking about is anything that, um, that we should know about your animal. Is it sensitive to sound? Does it worry? Does it not like a baseball cap? These are important bits of information. You should have enough water for um, your animal, the kind of food that it normally eats for at least a three day supply, as well as any medications that it takes. And then all of this can go in a go kit or a go bag. If you have a cat, you want to have a small Tupperware um, uh, area that you can fill with cat litter so that you can put the cat somewhere where it can use the litter box effectively. And a collapsible water bowl for you to be able to offer the pet water on those hot days. If you have a dog, it's a good idea to have a slip lead in your evacuation kit. A slip lead is uh, helpful because it's not going to come off if the dog panics. Sometimes if there's a lot of commotion and a dog has a loose collar on, they can back out of their collar and then you've got a loose dog. So a slip lead is an important part of your evacuation kit. Another really important component to being prepared is making sure that your pet has the appropriate identification, whether that be a collar that has tag and contact information. Also, if you can have your pet microchipped, it is really valuable. Any pet coming into a shelter is going to be scanned for a microchip, um, and that can immediately connect us with you if you're not there when your animal is evacuated. It is important that you register the microchip with the microchip company, and that's a process that your veterinarian or your local humane society can help you with.